Hi everybody and welcome to week four of Masculine Tea and Feminine Tea. And this is the last time you'll see this outfit, I promise. I taped three of these in a row. So uh, today I'm going to talk a little bit about the fourth chapters in both books for her own good and um, studying men. And I might as well start with studying men. It's a little tougher to understand. And here, Buttbinder is trying to tell us what patriarchy is, and I like that he takes on this, this word. I, I don't like the word patriarchy, and I tend to not use it, because when we think of a patriarchal society, we think of the, well, what he would call the, the social structure, uh, patriarchy as rule of the father, where men run everything and men are in charge, etc. And that, that just doesn't exist. And it doesn't accurately reflect the way patriarchy or male power dominates. So what Buttbinder is telling us is that we need to stop thinking of patriarchy in those old ways. And instead, and I like this, it's buried on page 68, but um, even, let's see, we want to... Um, Patriarchy, then, is today less an overt, explicit social structure than a rather nebulous set of discursive strands that constitute for people in the culture an ordinary way of thinking of themselves as subjects within a sex and gendered economy. Oh my God, that was a horrible sentence. Um, what he's saying is that patriarchy isn't a solid social structure, but patriarchy is a way of thinking. Patriarchy is a way of understanding the world Patriarchy is a way of organizing ourselves and the world. I mean, you think about a family, if you've got a traditional heterosexual male-female, there is a, a, a patriarchal thinking even in that organization and in the people's relationships. And it exists in my own family. I know that my children will say, um, will turn to their father in certain situations as the head, that there's a dominance and mastery implicit in his position as the father, main breadwinner, um, head of the household, etc. That's how we want to think about patriarchy, is how we organize ourselves and the way we think. Um, and I, I think that, and we, and we all internalize these ideals and beliefs, and we desire them. So even though I may think that the patriarchal structuring of my family is problematic, I still participate in it to some extent. So of course I'm a critic of myself and I see what's happening, but um, it exists. Here's another a good example. My 15 year old daughter said to me about a week ago that she didn't like how I waited on her older brother. And I was constantly saying to my oldest son, do you want a snack, honey? Can I make you some chicken wings? How's your studying going? And kind of catering to him. And she said, you don't do that to me. And I was like, oh my God. You know, and I hadn't fully realized that pull. So that's an example of patriarchy as a way of thinking, a way of organizing our thoughts and our practices. So I was arranging my behavior around that kind of patriarchal structure. So, um... And so he also talks about um, patriarchy, the, the solid structure. So we might think the order of things, the structure, the patriarchal order, he calls it. So a good example of that is politics. If you look at our House of Representatives, uh, the Senate, the presidential office, the cabinet, we see mostly men. So this is, a, and a founding fathers of the United States, etc. So there are the church, you can look at churches, uh, businesses. So there's social order of patriarchy. But there's also an economy, patriarchal economy, where power, people have access to the power, uh, the promise of power in the patriarchy. And this is where it gets tricky because some men, hear that promise, they have the promise, but they don't get the power. So if you are not able-bodied, if you are not white, if you are not straight, you do not have equal access to the power available 
in the patriarchal economy. So now, but if you're a woman or a gay man or a black man or an Asian man and you're positioned somewhere in a spot in the social order that holds a lot of power, so the presidency or the Senate um, CEO of a company, then you have more access to power. So who has more power? Um, a Native American man um, who works, you know, odd jobs, kind of dad, an ordinary guy, or a Native American man who's the CEO of a Fortune 500 company. Well, of course, you know. But, um, but you see the, but what masculinity does is it holds out this promise that you get this power within the patriarchy just because you're a man. But the truth is, the economy, the system, means that that's just not so. So he wants us to think about patriarchy not in an old-fashioned way, but as a fluid kind of system of organizing and thinking and operating with an economy of power. An economy of power. So I like that. I like that way of thinking about it. For her own good, uh, they talk about the sexual politics of sickness. And uh, this is, this era um, was very, this chapter I think is very important. And I'm going to not go over this, but I'm going to challenge you to think about the sexual politics of sickness today. And I've talked about thyroid disease, but I just, should write a book on it because I think that's a great example of where um, our beliefs about gender come into play and shape what medicine has to offer us. And I, and I also really wonder about the whole erectile dysfunction focus on Viagra and virility. And it seems to me to be sad, to be um, reducing our elders reducing men to one body part, that that is a one sex act, that that is going to make the rest of their life perfect. And it ties into a lot of other mythologies about masculinity and sex and the phallus. So I, I think there is so much potential in the politics of sickness and even in the politics of reproduction too. If you think about why we don't have better birth control coming from the male point of view, how we pathologize in some way pregnancy, etc. So there's just the night, the Victorian era, the 19th, early 20th century that the writers lay out for you. I just see, think we see a clear line right back to that, right back to the dynamics that Aaron Reich and English lay out a hundred years ago, I think we can see clear connections. So, so that's it for the start of week four. Have a good week, everybody.